Welcome to the shared service of St. Thomas Wesley and Knox United Churches. We are proud to be the affirming ministry journey. We are grateful to live on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Um, we live on Treaty 6. We are all treaty people. We're all treaty people. Okay, we're going to light the candle here. Creation is made of star stuff. From the basic building blocks of the universe oh, okay. come fire, air, earth, and water. All creation sings praise to the creator. We welcome the Christ to brighten and ground our worship. May the spark of divine energy be a beacon of hope to all. Let us pray. Spirit of life, leaves turn, the world turns, our lives turn, but we gather here this morning to be still. For a brief time and to dedicate this time to you, let us feel you gathering us into the great love of the universe, reconciling us with stories, with our relations, that we may turn towards one another in communion and solidarity. Amen. And a reading from Matthew 22, 34 to 46. One of the Pharisees, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is, this is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On those two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. What's on the exam, we've probably all wondered at some occasion or other. Jesus gets a test question by a religious leader, also a lawyer. Jesus answers straight from the heart what's deeply imprinted memory of their shared sacred scriptures. He puts those two teachings together in a way that made people sit up and take notice. Well, easier said than done, as we all know. Who is our neighbor? And what does it mean to love them, especially when we don't feel like it? Wrestling with these questions is at the heart of discipleship. The fact that Jesus attaches these two teachings together is a bit sneaky. He actually gives two greatest commandments in his answer to the lawyer. But he goes further. He says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In this radical linking of the love of God with love of neighbor and self as the greatest, Jesus makes all other laws regulations about purity, cleanliness, rituals, sacrifices, doing things properly. You know, all those things we fuss about secondary. Often those regulations were ways of maintaining class privilege, of rank, etc. And with this teaching all combined, Jesus makes love much bigger than all that other stuff. He's just undercut the privileged status from under the feet of religious leaders whose position depended upon these secondary laws. Yikes, no wonder he was a threat to the status quo. But the point being here, the spirit of love is much bigger than some of our cultural notions, maybe our family inherited things about what are the proper ways to show love. We're learning about our neighbor in a new light, a post-colonial light, as we're studying a book called White Fragility. We're coming to grips with what, what privilege does being a white person have? How do we love one another as we become aware of the privileges and benefits accorded to us simply by the color of our skin and background? We were sharing some stories about when we first became aware of our racial identity. One member talked about the awareness that, that she and her friends were different from children who lived on reserves, who generally were poor and needed things like proper clothing. She talked about her mother in the Women's League, about getting clothes bundled up and then delivering them to the reserves. 
she felt good about that, that they were reaching out with something their neighbors needed. But she didn't feel so good when then some of the mothers said, and now we want to go back to make sure that they're wearing the clothes properly, that they're using the clothes properly. And that word bothered her. What did proper mean? Like whose idea was it? A small story about the tricky business of reaching out to love and share and yet wanting to do it our way and what we're used to. We're now challenged to learn and respect difference, intercultural ways of being neighbors together. Oh, it's hard enough not even to try to control the ones we love in our families, let alone try to change them. Well, and what about when it's hard to love your neighbors, when you don't even like them or can't stand them? The love that's being called for in these teachings doesn't mean like, desiring, or feeling warm things. The love that Jesus talks about is more like looking out for their well-being, supporting what they need to have full access to life. You may not like your neighbor, although you might if you try, but you will still love them in the biblical sense if you continue to act for their well-being, make sure they have access to medical care, clean water, good schooling. In other words, the same things you'd want for yourself and your families. And to build a society, and I dare say vote for leaders who also do that. By the way, we'll know when we're challenged and called to late to love a neighbor, it's an encounter that crosses our path. And we know when we're challenged that that's in fact the calling we're being asked to exercise. And if we remember this teaching imprinted upon our hearts, it'll guide us to right action. Loving God with our whole self takes some action and practices. Loving our neighbor as ourselves takes some practice. And it's even trickier to love ourselves as we would love God and our neighbor. If we dare to add a third teaching, let's just imagine scriptures being updated and it's probably time. I'm sure Jesus would want us to love ourselves as we would our neighbor. Have you noticed that it's easier to forgive a friend we love and kind of ignore their failings and help and encourage them to get on with life, it's easier sometimes than loving ourselves. We can be hard on ourselves. We can be harsh. And yet this teaching calls us to love us as we would love someone we love. And we all need practice on a daily basis because it's all one, loving God with all our hearts and our minds and our strength loving our neighbors and loving ourselves. Fortunately, it's a lifelong process and we have compassionate, passionate teachers along the way, helping us to learn, forgive, reconcile and expand and change what it means to love in the way God calls. Love is having a great passion for the well-being of others for all of life and acting upon it. It even means getting into trouble, good trouble. Jesus did overturn the money changers tables and took on the system. <coughs> we can love and we can resist. We can even be joyfully defiant. It's all part of the kind of loving and justice seeking God has in mind. Let us pray. <coughs> River of life, bread of heaven, we come to drink deeply of your grace and forgiveness that we may offer grace and forgiveness to others. We come to eat at your table spread worldwide for all the peoples to share sustenance and friendship. Be with your people who are confronted with health and life challenges. Wrap your healing love around Georgie Kyle, our beloved Georgie, as she prepares 
to pass into your spirit world. Bless her and wrap her with loving presence of her daughter's visits and our many messengers. Bless Jack Hilson as he now stands with assistance and hopes to go home with the ability for more mobility in a couple months. Bless Dave Rugg recovering from surgery and Lindsay Fast waiting for yet another surgery. And bless Olga Tisnick's daughters, Sylvia and Shirley, as we all gathered to say goodbye to Olga today and return her to the earth, even as we commended her spirit to you. We pray that Doug Finley's surgery will go ahead as scheduled on October 14th. And there's others we are praying for. Strengthen us to keep one another safe, bring as much well-being as possible, and provide what we need to live well. Amen. I invite you to sing along with our closing hymn, My Love Colors Outside the Lines. Oh, long to color outside the line. 